Hey YouTube, um, it's daily update time. Um, over on my Patreon channel, I do something called Ask Pamela Anything. And about once, once or twice a week, I'll go on and just um, let you ask all your questions and I'll pick a couple of them to answer here on YouTube live. And then the rest of them, I just type in as many questions as I can answer. So you had a bunch of questions today and I wanted to go over some of these questions because they were incredible. Your, your questions are incredible. You're, you're so smart. <laughs> you really are. Um, I love the way that your brains are operating and the way that um, your passion is moving and some of you being so vulnerable and authentic um, right now in your discussions with me and the things you ask me. So I can't wait to answer for you. Before I do that, I just want to give you a brief reminder that tonight at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time live on this channel, um, I'm going to be facilitating a channeling. I will not be channeling, but I will be the facilitator. I will be the person taking your YouTube questions at 7 p.m. live on this channel while we trans-channel George Floyd. So uh, beautiful, Alana Heavenly is gonna be doing that for us. You will love her. I've worked with her for a long time. You've seen her here and there on this channel as my facilitator. So now it's time for me to return the favor and let you see how amazing she is. So I know that this is gonna be a very healing thing. We have seven or eight moderators to make sure that things stay peaceful and um, and pure and wonderful during our live time together tonight. I can't wait to see you then. And of course, Monday, I'll link it below, I'm going to be channeling Archangel Metatron, which I haven't done in years. I'm really excited about that because when I asked Metatron what the topic would be about for the channeling when I go into trance, he was very clear. And he said, um, you are redesigning your DNA, all of you, healers, empaths in particular, people who are going through such difficult spiritual awakenings right now, he can actually tell you why and what that's about. So all the questions that you've been having for me for the past um, few months in particular about why your spiritual awakenings are so hard, physically and emotionally, he's gonna be discussing what our original DNA was like on this planet over 175,000 years ago versus what it's like now and how it is being reconstructed and redesigned um, back to what it used to be. So that's really exciting as well. So let's get right to your questions. I'm just looking at the Ask Pamela Anything post on Patreon. Um, first question is hilarious. She said, um, are there any transmuting techniques for a hangover? And I told her B12 and aspirin. And then I said, um, seriously, please check out my transmuting toxins class because those technologies really do work for that as well. So that's um, right there on my Patreon channel at all levels um, right now. You'll, you'll be able to see it. So <laughs> it's a good one. You'll like it for that. Um, a lot of you have been talking about having really bizarre, deep, profound spiritual dreams, and you've been listing out what type of dreams you've been having. And I want you to know that that's normal right now. We're in the deepest stages of our awakening individually um, on this planet. So your dreams, if they're not already getting bizarre, they're going to get more so. Have fun. That's normal right now. Um, Next question, how can we feel peace, compassion, and love in a situation of chaos and stress? Um, I'm going to tell you what Ram Das has told me when I channel him. He said, be as you are and start where you are. If you don't feel peaceful, don't fake it. Don't try to force it. Um, it's really incredible when you can just authentically be in a state of awareness about what you actually feel as opposed to trying to be something other than where you are. Okay. Um, next question. This was, I really loved this question because in my Q and A yesterday, um, we were talking about everyone's need for knowledge, intellectual knowledge, um, in understanding and gaining more knowledge, just spiritual learning and spiritual classes. I mean, I'm a teacher. I love classes. They're fun. They're creative. Um, but I just wanted to read this question to you because it's just such a common question for a lot of you right now. So the question is, Pamela, you mentioned in yesterday's Q&A that spiritual awakening and realization is not about knowledge or understanding anything. I have a background in research and I feel I would need to heavily decondition myself 
into not wanting to understand anything anymore or gain knowledge. What is wrong with wanting to understand things or gain knowledge? Isn't curiosity something we need in an expansive universe? Um, it is a want, not a need. I'll start there. So there isn't anything wrong, you know, when you put it that way, there's nothing wrong with your passion for knowledge, your passion for research, your passion for understanding, but do not confuse knowledge and research and intellectual understanding with the deep God mind wisdom and discernment that is very different from anything that human knowledge that's intellectualized in your logic can give you, okay? So it's one of those Saturday afternoons where my kids are fighting, so I may get interrupting. <laughs> They're fighting like hardcore. So what I have to say about that is consider knowledge and learning a beautiful hobby creatively. So it's the foundation of spiritual awakenings and realization is um, more of a deeper God mind discernment. And human knowledge and intellectual understanding is creative. It's like play. It's something that helps us expand in our human minds. Now for the human mind, play is a creative necessity in order to stay emotionally well, okay? And the true essence of awakening is actually something deeper than that. The true essence of awakening is contentment, which leads to peace and satisfaction, a deep satisfaction. So the way that I can liken it is to a really yummy snack, like my, my little Emmy right now wants me to go feed her some junk and I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to um, grill some vegetables on the grill while she swims. And that's what we're gonna do this afternoon. <laughs> and we're gonna connect with nature. I'm gonna watch her swim um, and we're gonna do that. So if I just like feed her chocolate, that's gonna, her mind, all that sugar rush is gonna go straight through her brain and, and she's gonna have all this energy and she's gonna be like, yeah, I feel good. And then she's gonna crash. And she's going to not want more, but she's going to need more. So consider your spiritual nutrition not to be knowledge from an intellectual understanding, but your actual spiritual nutrition is contentment, which leads to a very satiating peace. Okay? So um, knowledge from the intellect is sharp, it's fascinating, it gives you a high, just like a sugar rush, but it'll leave you longing for more and then more after that, and then more after that, but it will never fill you up. So I remember this stage in my life, particularly in my 20s and 30s with, you know, as a galactic historian, knowing a lot about um, star seeds and things that happen um, in cosmology. I used to long for this knowledge and I am very scientific by nature. And as a galactic historian and researcher of past lives, I can feel what you mean um, I do have a lot of knowledge, at least from the human perspective, but it's not satiating. It only leaves me with more questions and wanting to know more and more and more. So it's only the deep contentment of God that satiates me and makes me happy inside of myself. Okay. Um, there was another question that just really pulled me. And if my kids can go long enough without fighting right now and being bored, I will read it to you. Okay because I hear this a lot. This is really common, particularly right now during quarantines. Um, it's really common, this question. She said, I don't know what I want or what I desire. I don't know what I'm passionate about. Even the things I think I enjoy or think I might enjoy, I'm not really passionate about. There's no fire. I can't tell if this is a part of losing egoic identity and control or if I'm a, if I'm in a years long, mildly depressive state, I'm just waiting for source to tell me what I want so I can live from that place. But Yeshua and others also speak of desire as a tool of creation and to realize that I have none is freaking me out. It should a little. That does sound like depression, especially if it's been going on a long time. So let me tell you a little trick about creative desire. It doesn't come from nothing. It comes from forcing yourself into self-care. I know you're not going to like that answer, but if you don't eat and shower and exercise and stay away from the middle aisles of the grocery store and eat well, sleep well, meditate well, have a good spiritual practice, desire doesn't come first. You have that first 
and then you go into the things you think you might desire. And the more you get deeper into functionality, which depression isn't, it pulls you away from that. You cannot have desire first. So here are the three um, characteristics of energy that you cannot have before action. They are desire, motivation, courage. Desire, motivation, courage. You can't have it in advance. So when people come to me, the image that the archangels give me about this to teach is as follows. I always get um, an image in my mind of when I was a little girl and riding, learning to ride a bicycle. And no matter what my dad would say and my mom would say, my dad taught me how to ride a bike. My mom, my mom tried to prepare me with the intellectual understanding what it might feel like and tried to talk me into it and try to give me courage and motivation. And But I would just look at that bike and go, there's just no way, <laughs> right? Um, so we got training wheels and my dad was like, so we're going to do this. And then one day we're going to take these training wheels off. And I remember the fear that I had. I didn't have any courage or motivation. I had kind of this thing of, I think I'm going to like that. And then I remember when the wind was blowing through my hair for the first time and how powerful that felt. And I had never really felt that before. This is kind of what your purpose is going to feel like. What you're longing for is creative purpose, but you don't get it in advance. You don't get pa passion um, motivation or courage before you actually get on that bicycle, even if it's just with your training wheels, just going along and go where you need to go. And then one day, Spirit's going to take those training wheels off. Okay? That's going to happen. And you're going to be freaking out about it. And you're just going to need to do it anyway. Spiritual awakening is a do it anyway thing that you give yourself permission to work on desire. You don't need it in advance. But when those, I remember when my dad did this, um, we were in the yard and he just kind of, we were in front of my house and there's a big, our house is on a hill and he just went by and pushed. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I thought you were gonna, all these things are going through my head. I thought you were gonna hold the back of my little banana seat bicycle while I was going down. I thought that was gonna happen. He taught me to swim the same way. I was at the edge of a pier and he was like, Psh. I'm like, kind of hit you right now. <laughs> like that was going through my head, but not for long. So this is what ego is gonna tell you. It's gonna tell you that that's not gonna feel good, that that's gonna be scary, that that's gonna be bad, that that's gonna be this, that, and the other. And you know, put whatever label you want. It's gonna tell you all those things, okay? So this is depression, what you're speaking of. And remember the three value systems of desire or passion, uh, courage or bravery, and motivation. They don't come in advance. They come by hard work, trust, and trying. Just effort, straight out effort. Otherwise, if you don't, you fall into apathy, deep apathy, which is the deepest form of depression that is very desireless, which is kind of, you're right on the edge of that. So you're going to need to discipline yourself with some certain activity to try out where you need to go. Okay. All right, guys. I will see you for Monday's channeling. I'll link it below of Archangel Metatron about redesigning human DNA. And I will see you tonight at 7 p.m. live on this channel. See you soon.